2.3 example two just gets us to switch another function from standard form to vertex form. And then part B, it asks us to verify that the two forms are equivalent. But there's a few different ways of doing that verification. You can graph both graphs um, and make sure that they're exactly the same. You can expand vertex form to get standard form. Um, I think I'll show the graphical technique because that's probably the easiest and involves a little bit of tech, which is good to see. But first, we have to convert that. Um, this is pretty similar to example one. Um, because we have a coefficient on our x squared, we do have to factor that out. And I really want to push home that the technique doesn't change just because you get uglier numbers. And we are going to get uglier numbers in this question. So I am going to write this. I'm going to factor that 4 out of anything that has an x in it. So 4x squared divided by 4 is x squared. Negative 28x divided by 4 is negative 7x. And then we'll leave the 23 alone. Now, I'd like to reiterate that what we're looking to do here is identify that if x minus m squared is equal to x squared plus, whoops, not plus, minus 2mx plus m squared, and we have x squared minus 7x, we need to figure out what m is. Well, if negative 2m is negative 7, then m is 7 halves. That makes m squared, and like I said, it gets a little ugly here, it is going to be 49 fourths. Where that 49 over four comes from is seven over two times seven over two, right? Seven times seven is 49, two times two is four. Now, what that means is that if I can somehow manipulate this and get plus 49 over four, this will factor, I ran out of room here, but this would be X minus seven over two squared. Ugly fraction, but we have to be able to work with, you know, numbers that aren't pretty integers or natural numbers. So knowing that we need 49 over four, means that inside this bracket, I am going to add 49 over four and subtract 49 over four within the bracket itself. Now, the first three terms, x squared, negative seven x plus 49 over four are now a perfect square trinomial and can be factored as such. But before we do so, we have to get that negative constant out. And the way that we do that is by multiplying by the number in front of my factored expression which for this question is four. So I'm gonna get that y is equal to four times x squared minus seven x plus 49 over four minus 49 over four times four is 49. And then we still have that 23 lurking in the back. Now I can factor my bracket. So that's gonna be four times it's x minus seven over two. Remember that that number is generated by whatever m is in this context. And then 49 or negative 49, sorry, minus 23 is going to be negative 72. Now, really what we're saying in this question is y equals, you know, four times x minus seven half squared minus 72 is the same function as y equals four x squared minus 28 x minus 23. They sure don't look like they're the same function, but we could expand what I have in blue to make sure that we get the black function. But I do want to show you the advantage of the graphing calculator, which to make sure that I've done this correctly, and for y1, I'm going to put my factor form. So we'll 4 times x minus 7 halves, which you close that bracket and square it, minus 72. And then for y2, I'm going to have 4x squared minus 28x minus 23 and because my vertex is really ugly right it's at 3.5 comma negative 72 i just want to make sure that we see all that so i'm going to make my x min negative 10 my x max positive 10 but i'm going to make my y min negative 100 just to make sure we see the vertex oops i missed there so y min is negative 100 and we'll make y max i oh, will make it symmetrical we'll make it positive 100 and now when i graph it we're going to see that my first function in blue has a vertex and that's around 3.5 comma, you know, negative 72. Look at the red function when it graphs. You see how it went perfectly over top of the blue function? That's a really important consideration that it does mean that these two functions give exactly the same output when we put in the same input. And that does verify that they're the same graph. Um, we could use our trace button. Uh, you know, you can see them on the blue function now. When X is zero, Y is negative 23. If I go to the red function, I get the same point. Well, let's pick a different one. Let's pick when x is equal to 5. On the red function, I get negative 70, 63, sorry. On the blue function, I get negative 63 as well. So the fact that their graphs are, you know, coincidental, they go over top of each other, means that these two functions are not different functions. It's just like they're wearing different clothes. And th we do that for a reason. This black function, I know the y-intercept is negative 23 just by inspection. The blue function, I can tell you where the vertex is, and then both of them, I can tell you it opens up. 
um, with you know a little bit more narrow than y equals x squared. Completing the square is tricky. Um, make sure you have access to the videos as you're doing the homework. You might have to go back and, and watch one or two of these, but more important than anything, you have to make sure that you're trying it on your own as well. Watching these videos will never make you competent at completing the square. Just watch them. You have to do the work or do some practice as well.